and we we aim to yeah, give you an idea of the whole project goal um, providing all students with international experiences is actually one of the major goals of our live sciences project and despite of an average mobility rate of 35 percent of Göttinger students already there still numerous obstacles regarding mobility and um, gathering international experiences, whether they are virtual or physical. And um, with LIV Sciences, we therefore want to consider the whole student journey, as you can see in the picture. And um, uh, so the student international journey, with the, we try to overcome the, the hurdles, which you can see in, in yellowish color. And um, also the um, the questions students are confronted on their ways from their home to their host universities and back, either this way are physical or virtual. So question like, questions like, does this work online? Where do I find information? Which courses can I take? Which deadlines do I have to meet? And uh, to whom do I need to submit this documents? Where I can, can I get access or can I share my story? And um, the students' perspectives, that's actually the basis for our Live Sciences project. And yeah, we want to uh, give answers to all these questions and facilitate the whole student journey with digital services and enrich it with um, transnational uh, learning and uh, teaching offers. But what I have basically learned within the, in the last weeks or months already is sometimes it's um, not, necessar not necessary to have the right answer right away, but sometimes it's really helpful to ask the right questions to the right people. And uh, in order to somehow exercise that or change perspective, we have uh, thought about making a little game out of um, thinking about student mobility. And uh, with this, I would like to hand over to my dear colleague, Shahira, start the game. Thank you very much. Um, I just uh, forgot to mention, in case you need to have the slides a little bit bigger, you can that, adjust that um, on your own. Um, so feel free to do that. Um, as you see in the title, is student mobility in jeopardy. Um, it was actually also the best possibility to play jeopardy. Um, I never really um, watched that show uh, on TV, but I found the concept very interesting. So here it is how it goes, and you will have the chance to play with us. We are looking for the question, actually. Um, and so we will give you a hint in the category, and uh, you can guess in the question the question in the chat. And so to um, um, just uh, be uh, sure that the chat is working. Um, I have a, a question for you. Um, have you played Jeopardy before? Please type that in the chat. Um, it's the corner called conversations. Barbara started with a no. All right. Thank you very much for that. It looks like the chat is working. So uh, let's have a round uh, of uh, testing. As I said, let's try this. The first one would be the category, in this case, 1212 mic check for 100 points. And this is also different from the game. I will give you the points and choose the category. And that only because of issues of time. Otherwise, we'll be playing here for the whole evening. The answer to which we are looking for the question is winter is coming. So this is the answer and you would be guessing and you can guess also already for this one. Um, what is the question? Okay, the reference is clear, but please make sure that you formulate actually a question and because this is a trial it's nothing to do with our subject. Um, what is one of the most popular Game of Thrones references would have been the question. So you can see this could have been the question. The other one would have been, what is Game of Thrones? Um, exactly. All right. Well, <laughs> I think this is working. But um, let's try to get a little bit serious um, and forget about the winter is coming. Let's play. 
Is this working? And I'm sure the one or the other have asked themselves many times this question. For 100 points, it's easy. And here's the hint. A free international service for users in research, higher education, and further education. It provides researchers, teachers, and students easy and secure network access when visiting an institution other than their own. I'm pretty sure the one or the other is using this service right now to connect. I'll give you an additional hint is related to Wi-Fi. So we're looking for a question. Oh, I can see some of the people already writing. Please feel free, the others. I'll give you more a couple more seconds to do this. And we do actually have the right question. <laughs> what is it, Rome? Yes. Let's continue with uh, another one. The hint is my house, my rules, my credentials. 200 points because it's a little bit less unknown. unknown. And here we go. It interconnects identity federations around the world, simplifying access to content, services, and resources for the global research and education community. Sounds like useful to me. We're looking for a question. Interconnects identity federations around the world, simplifying access to content. Any guesses? I know this might sound technical. Oh, I see someone asking a question. Ah. Oh. Anyone else? Three, two, one. Could have been, could have been, but is. <laughs> there you go, Tanya. Very close, very close. Could have been. How does Educain function? It's about Educain. And so, a little break. Um, I think the show has the commercial breaks, but this one is actually reflecting on the hints um, I have uh, shared. Um, one of my colleagues once said in a, in a you know, talking about um, how difficult, how secure is it actually to open our systems to students coming um, to our universities or trying to access before coming to our system. It is in a way a cultural experience to be able to access, navigate and navigate through other learning management systems than the ones at our home universities. The question now is, what is it that we need? Um, the reason why I talked about Edurom is um, uh, because it's one step to be able to access the networks with our own credentials. Now, the uh, other myth around things that might hinder student mobility is because um, it is unsecure. Um, it is not necessarily data safe um, to be able to navigate through new um, systems with our, our own credentials. On the other hand, we, we see the development of uh, networks and federations like Edugain. So technically it is possible. So what I'm saying is there are things that are evolving that makes the access um, for sure easier but then it does that mean that we need to ignore security issues um, behind that and what is it with this cultural aspect um, for those who were uh, attending the conference um, uh, moving targets 2020 um, a lot of the people in the keynotes and also uh, the speakers shared this notion of having a new perception of data, a cultural uh, perception and aspect, and that rang a bell to me. So if we look at the infrastructure that is there, if you look at the cultural experience, we still have to think about the methods and the content. And here you can see the uh, context in which we are evolving within the project, but also today because of the pandemic and despite of the pandemic, is that there are more and more flexibility, more and more opportunities. But again, coming back to student mobilities, um, what is it that we really need to look at? And um, 
we're talking about virtual physical mobility and also a hybrid format of that. Now let's go back to play again. And um, this is, I thought, a little bit of a, a provocative category. Category, sorry. The mailman delivering the good news to the lost generation. And this one is for 300. And I think there are people who know about a network with the aim to empower individuals to control their own student data and exchange through a lifespan across borders for various purposes. A network with the aim to empower individuals to control their own student data and exchange through a lifespan across borders for various purposes. For those who have attended uh, the uh, conference um, the previous days and also listened in uh, to the one or the other session might know that. Any guesses? I think I have seen some of this a proposal for a, um, a previous question exactly about that. Denisa, I think you're very close. Three, two, one, and the question is, what is MREX? So I think only you could have uh, uh, guessed that for sure. To keep it short, and because there will be experts uh, during tomorrow's workshop day, uh, and I'll invite you to check out the program, uh, there will be a session at um, room two, uh, at uh, 2 p.m. exactly about um, this. Uh, this is the small commercial break. MREX and uh, standardized digital processes and tools. Uh, we talked about the student journey, um, the student international journey and the student being at the center. And when you think about it, it wasn't always like that. Yes, we do teaching and learning, we care about our students, but what if uh, they could also be more involved and they could be empowered to have the control of their own data? Um, what MREX uh, enables and also other standards is uh, to have the possibility, if I am a student at um, my university and I'm all going abroad, um, when I come back um, within a few clicks to be able to move uh, the data, but not only in that context, many more beyond that, um, which means that for student mobility to happen, um, it is not only and always linked with paperwork and a lot of um, time. Um, that also means that we need to work on the digital processes. And this is something we would like to do in our uh, project as well. The next hint, who dares? Hint, hint, it is actually something completely the opposite. Who dares, but it rhymes with who dares. 400 points because I think it's a little bit difficult. The question we are looking for answers. Groups of people who share a concern or a passion for something they do and learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. It's the concept that is not new in itself, but has been proven to be very effective groups of people who share a concern or a passion. We are looking for a question. We are looking for a question. Yeah, I see, I see. Uh, Tanya, Rene, anyone else would like to try? Three, two, one, and that was exactly the correct answer what are communities of practice what is a community of practice now as i said it is nothing new but the reason why um, to be able to support mobility and uh, to be more precise the international student journey um, is that we have asked actually um, students and uh, one of the things that they are requested or thought that would be very helpful could have helped them um, was having a community of peers uh, a safe space where they could experiment um, new skills they learn um, and also um, a, a space they go to to talk to their peers um, in the beginning i said who dares uh, the question that is very obvious is like 
Well, who cares about a community? Why would students who are done with their exchange semester still care? Well, you'd be surprised if there is interest, if there is something they could share meaningfully, they expressed um, the interest to carry on. And we know, again, nothing new that the alumni networks in our universities and particularly at the University of Göttingen is a network that has been powerful and going on. So integrating a community that is of use uh, where the students Students can also experiment of their role as being partners in within this whole journey is something that could definitely empower the um, student um, mobility. Now, the last one, too good to be true, and um, 500 points, and surprise, it's not a text. Uh, so I invite you, for those who need a bigger picture, to take a second to do that. Um, as you can see, this is maybe a little bit elaborated uh, picture than the one you saw in the beginning, but I'd like to draw your attention that um, moving from questions that we had in the beginning, we now see um, exclamation points, but also aha moments. Students going through this journey have realized it is possible to do things online. Um, students are pleased to meet uh, people. What this is not saying is, is it physical? Is it virtual? What we aim to do in this uh, project is definitely to combine both. And now in times uh, where the physical has been very challenging, let's put it like that, this didn't stop us or this didn't lead us to change all the concepts or the foundations of this project, but gave us let's say a push to think about how can we promote a journey that could be also virtual and um, empower the students uh, here? How can we support that? So what do you think would be a question um, this picture could answer? We started from a simple student international journey. What you see in the middle is um, a set of measures that can support the digital process, the digital enhancement of so many things. What do you think the question could be for which we have this answer? There is no wrong, actually, question. So would you like to try one? I know this one is a little bit complicated. Three, two, one. And the question is, what is an enhanced student international journey? We really would like to have um, you know, a journey where it is enhanced not only by means of um, introducing innovative methods, uh, trying to experiment, um, but also trying to facilitate, as Anna mentioned in the beginning, the whole process. Um, before I open the floor uh, to some of uh, the questions, and I would love to hear from you, um, I would like to you know, besides of uh, using the Jeopardy term uh, within the game, point to some of the things that I mentioned. Just because it looks, you know, nice on the picture doesn't mean um, that it's easy. Um, we heard a lot uh, even today and we're hearing through the um, experience um, that many higher education institutions gained in the last six months that um, there is, um, something that is very important to raise awareness about um, issues like legal frameworks, innovation, and um, experiment more. This sounds to me more like a challenge than an opportunity. So what we're trying to do um, in the Live Sciences project is to really be aware of these uh, problems like security, like uh, data, um, but also the legal frameworks. And the question is, we have seen things changing from today you know, within 24 hours. Um, but the one thing that we would like to push uh, with this project is the sustainability, not only as a topic, um, you know, when it comes to sustainable land use, uh, but really within how can we build infrastructure? How can we build methods? How can we build safe spaces 
where our students can really and fully enjoy their role as being partners of this journey and be able to enjoy the enhanced student international journey. With this, I'd like to thank you all for your attention, but most of all, if you have any questions, please feel free. You can also request and um, our dear Barbara will help us with that. If you would like to take the microphone, please use the request um, uh, option. You can also feel free to write in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. Anna and I love to uh, answer your questions. Thank you, Denise. Thank yeah, thanks everybody for um, being here with us. Maybe once again, if you want to get deeper insights on how to um, work on implementing standardized digital processes, we'll be back tomorrow for a workshop at 1 p.m. And the workshop is about future scenarios for international student mobility on digital platforms. So I'm really happy to see some of you back tomorrow. I'm checking in the chat if there are uh, more questions and hopefully also please feel free to request the mic to answer, to ask the question. Um, we still have uh, some time to do that. Oh, there's one question in the chat yes. from Bettina. Yeah, is there any experience in student mobility and digital platform in art academies? Um, I am pretty sure that the art academies are going through this. Um, I don't have um, the uh, the answer to that. Um, I know though that we have been recently approached and this has nothing to do with mobility, but also um, rather with digital platforms um, and um, specifically um, on the topic of uh, live performances. Um, for example, if, if you take, um, you know, theater playing or anything that involves like um, uh, audio of top quality and without any delays, um, there are platforms, for example, um, that are like the one in Germany that is being developed on digital um, stage, it is called. Uh, so there are some initiatives in there, but um, I am not sure how they are linked into student mobility. Um, I have a question. Please, <laughs> um, So for me, it seems that um, the University of Göttingen is, um, yeah, especially if you, if you look at the um, technical standards you have implemented with all these different programs, I, I don't really know. So that's not, not my focus, uh, international exchange uh, in the HFD. Um, is there any recommendation for smaller universities um, with only about 5,000 students, you don't have these big programs, how they can, yeah, take part and, um, yeah, also, um, um, yeah, enable their students with those programs. Do you have any, any recommendations? Anna, would you like direction? to take that one? Uh I can, mm -hmm. I can answer when it comes to, to, to platforms. Um, maybe I'll start off with that. Um, the idea behind, you know, so just to make clear, we are, um, as I said, most of these standards are um, uh, open and uh, my colleagues uh, will, will uh, for example, explain this better in the digital platform um, tomorrow in their session. But um, the idea of collaboration, even for a um, smaller institution, is not new. And um, we know that, for example, from the research, um, uh, you know, um, side. And so very often it starts with thinking about opening up 
um, a session. Um, and, um, you know, although I talked about platform, it doesn't have to be platform uh, dependent. Uh, think about, and this is something we did um, in the uh, internationalization of the curricula uh, with the concept of internationalization at home um, at the university is inviting new perspective from uh, outside. And that is can be a very um, fundamental um, you know, part into opening up for a new type of mobility, virtual mobility, um, and that doesn't require much. Uh, we know a lot more about video conferencing now than we used to do uh, six months before, uh, but we also know uh, you know, what, what kind of, we have partnerships, um, even for smaller institutions, so we can go these smaller steps. Um, the aim of our project is to build upon also smaller initiatives and bring them together so they can grow and feed in within the network. But you can start small, that's possible. Yeah. It's actually a very good question because uh, if I if I take a look into the efforts we are taking in, in like standardizing um, all these processes, it, it takes a lot of efforts and um, I can imagine that for smaller institutions it, it's quite challenging. Um, but yeah, what I can also see is to, to network and to be part of, of networks uh, doesn't, uh, yeah, it's, it's still possible and many things are developed um, open source and um, you can get in touch with with, uh, with people initiating and new new things and, and be part of of the development and networks so but yeah i guess it's 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 much more challenging for smaller institutions where to focus on um, and which um yeah where to put the resources of course so we have one last uh, a few yes. last seconds and one question in chat um, I'll take the, the one by Rene. Yes, Rene, we uh, we have been informed officially today that we are going to do the hybrid uh, mobility scenarios, not only as part of this project. We will have to learn uh, a lot. Um, I mean, if you go onto uh, the website Live Sciences at the University of Göttingen and uh, look for Live Sciences uh, 3, uh, you will definitely find news about that. Uh, we would like to assemble more best practices. Um, but uh, yeah, um, keep checking. We'll keep you updated. I think we're out of time, right? <laughs> yes, thank you really much. For thank your you, everyone, for coming. <laughs> game and information was super funny thanks <laughs> thank you for having us